Hello and welcome to Upside Down. Today I want to be talking about a software which I started using a couple of months back to create a lot of 3D scanned models and some of these models I've been reworking and making them low poly for game assets. Uh, some of them I've been just using to get some data and after that create scanned material. Today I want to talk a little bit more about Meshroom and also I wanted to show you how quickly you can actually create a 3D model from images. Before starting in the software, I first wanted to talk a little bit more about the images themselves and what do you have to look after when you're taking photos so that you know that uh, the quality of the model will be consistent and uh, everything will go well with the scan. So what I have here are a couple of uh, images that I made on a stone wall. Uh, right from the start, uh, you can see that all of them are kind of flat. One thing that is important when taking photos for recreating a 3D models after that, better to have more flat images, or at least I, I like to work this way. I like to have more flat images. This gives me a lot of opportunity to, after that, add brighter spots or add darker spots on the model. Also, it uh, makes everything more consistent and also it uh, allows you to not have like very bright spots or very dark spots. Another thing which uh, it's uh, important, you can see that uh, all the images are kind of the same values. There is no anyone which is uh, very bright and another one which is very dark. This is also important for the quality of our model because if we have inconsistency in between the colors and also in between the values of uh, bright spots and uh, darker spots, we will end up uh, with uh, not a good quality of the texture. Also our software can struggle a little bit more of uh, finding reference and stitching everything together. I will move now the folder with the images on the side, select everything and just drag and drop it here in the image tab. Meshroom is a very simple to use software. It's a node-based editor, you can see here on the bottom. What does a node-based editor mean? This means that uh, for each function that uh, the software will be doing, we have a specific uh, node and you can see what each node does, a whole process for creating this 3D model from the images. I'm not going to go today in depth in all the different notes and all the different settings that we have in the software. I'll just talk about the very last one, texturing. Here we can uh, set up our resolution of the texture that we want the software to create. Also, what uh, is the file format as well as what will be the unwrap method. We are just going to use basic for this video. And as well, we can see where will be our output folder for the mesh, material, texture. And this is the place where after the software finishes with uh, its work, we can find all the elements there. Another thing that I wanted quickly to introduce you to the software's uh, interface. So as you can see on this side, we have all the images or all the footage that we have taken for uh, recreating our 3D model. Then we have a viewport where we can inspect those images and see if everything is all right. I strongly suggest if you have some images which are brighter than others or darker to first go and edit them in either Photoshop or Lightroom. We have another tab which at the moment is uh, completely empty except that we have uh, the grid and gizmo. This is our 3D viewer. The moment that we already have uh, calculated our 3D data, here it will appear our mesh. And the way that the software works, it's uh, very simple. Now that we have all the images uh, imported, we can just click start. It will ask us to save our scene. Now I'll skip saving it, but I strongly recommend whenever you're working on your projects, just to go and save it. It's uh, something which is very easy, it doesn't take you lots of time, and it can save you a lot of trouble if something happens like crashing. Trust me, 3D software, not only 3D software, all software have issues uh, very often and uh, it's crashing and it's very frustrating in your work if you have to redo something that you just did like the last 10 or 15 minutes. So saving, especially before doing some actions that you potentially know that they can crash the software, it's a very good uh, habit just to save. As we can see here on the top, we have this line. So this is our progress. The moment that it goes all the way to the end means that uh, we are done. As well, we can see down here on those tabs, we can see the one which is with uh, yellow is the one that uh, at the moment is uh, being calculated. There is another thing that uh, I want you to notice if there is uh, any kind of an error while these calculations are being made. The tab which is giving the error is actually going to be the one which will be in red. The software is done in a very smart way. And when you fix the settings that you have on the note that it gave errors, 
then it won't calculate from the very beginning. It will already have this information calculated and so you don't have to wait for it. It will just automatically continue from uh, where it stopped. Now that Meshroom finished calculating our model, we can see already in the viewport those small cameras. This is the angles of all the pictures that uh, we've imported. Also, we can see that there is not really a model at the moment. There is only these dots. In order to have our model already loaded, we need to click the button over here, load model, wait a little bit, and there we have it. You can control the visuals in the viewport uh, of these dots, like if you want to see them or you, you don't want to see them from those sliders here. You can remove completely so we can inspect our model or we can of course make them bigger if we want thank you for joining me today i hope that this short tutorial is useful please leave a comment if you would like me to make a tutorial or anything which is game art related like and subscribe this video see you next time